number 11. This doesn't give me enough space in this area, so I'm going to start by rewriting this in vertex form. So first thing I'm going to do is move 5 to the opposite side. When I move it over, the 5 is going to turn into a negative 5. And then I'm going to factor out a 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Taking the b, dividing it by 2, and squaring it, make sure to keep the sign with a 4, is negative 2 squared. But we did not actually just add 4 to the right-hand side. In fact, it was a positive 12 that was added to the right. So a positive 12 must be added to the left to keep the equation balanced on the left and right. Y plus 7 equals, now if you went ahead and you factored this, it would turn into x minus 2 and x minus 2. The shortcut is to take whatever's here and place it in there. Moving 7 back to the other side, I have 3 times quantity x minus 2 squared, subtract 7. This is going to be equivalent to this. Now let's identify the vertex. The vertex can be found at 2, negative 7. So 2, negative 7, 2, 4, 6, and 7. Let's identify the y-intercept. Well, in standard form, it can be found all by itself at the very end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the constant. Calculate the zeros by hand. I'm going to choose probably just to set this equal to 0, but you could use this exact same form and use the quadratic formula, whatever you're comfortable with. Add 7 to the opposite side. And then I'm going to divide by 3. So 7 thirds equals x minus 2 quantity squared. Okay, take the square root of both. I'm going to have two answers. So plus or minus the square root of 7 over the square root of 3 equals x minus 2. Now I need to rationalize the denominator. We can't have our answer have a square root on the bottom. So I take whatever this value is and take it times the top and times the bottom. So plus or minus the square root of 21 over the square root of 9 equals x minus 2. And I know the square root of 21, sorry, I know the square root of 9 is 3. And lastly, I'm going to add 2 to the opposite side. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root of 21 over 3. Now this would be a way to express by hand the zeros, but you may see um, that we they do chat. Sorry, you may see that they choose to have a common denominator. So I'm going to take this times three and times three, and I have six plus or minus the square root of 21 over three. These are equivalent, just in a different form. Okay, next approximate the zeros using a graphing calculator. So I'm going to grab a graphing calculator and I'm going to plug this in. It doesn't matter if I use this original in standard form, which is up here, or if I use what I have in vertex form. 3x subtract 2 quantity squared, subtract 7, graphing it. Okay, this looks good. Let's check our zero. Second trace, find the zero. So somewhere to the left would be somewhere over here, and I could I choose actually a point like negative 1. Now to the right of this would be like 2, Press enter again, so I'm going to write this down, 0 0.4724, let's do the next one, second trace, 0, I'm going to choose 3, now somewhere to the right would be like 5, pressing enter again, 3.5275. So if I come back with these answers, so let's do this real quick, if I come back and check this, it doesn't matter which one I check, and I do 6 plus the square root of 21, get an answer and divide by 3, this is correct. And now I'm going to do 6 minus the square root of 21 divided by 3. And this one is also correct. Now how can we graph this accurately? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go x and y. Okay, notice that I have quadratics. The basic parent function is y equals x squared, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4, sorry, and negative 2, 4. Okay, but because the leading coefficient is a 3, whether we see it in standard form or we're looking in vertex form, it's still a 3. Where is that? Here it is. It's still a 3. So I need to take 3 times the y values. Times 3 is 12, 3, 0, 3, 12. What does that do? 
that says this is the vertex, go right one and up three. Right one and up three. One, two, three. Now, did I correctly, just look in here, I went over two and down seven. Did I count that right? Over two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's good. Then I'm going to go over two and up four. But I'm not actually going to go up four, I'm going to go up 12. So over two, up 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, then I'm going to go left one and up three, left one, up three. Hmm. And I'm going to go to the left two and up twelve. Left two and up twelve. Hmm. Oh, I see exactly what I just did wrong. Um, this point right here, when I graphed the y-intercept, it was a positive 5, not a negative 5. It was a positive 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is exactly where it should be. So here is my sketch of this function. Again, whether it is in standard form or rewritten in vertex form, it produces the same shape.